Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Pocus Cases. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of the biggest game changers in point of care ultrasound, and that's the abdominal aortic aneurysm. If you were to ask me, why do we have ultrasound machines in the emergency department? A AAA would be one of the first things I bring up as to why we need these tools in the emergency department to help us diagnose patients with life-threatening illnesses. Time is ticking with these aneurysms and we need to make a diagnosis quickly and accurately and relay this quickly to our surgeons for emergency management. Let's look at a case. This is a 60-year-old male who was out gardening and presented to the emergency department with back pain. He was told that it was muscular skeletal in nature, was given anti-inflammatories in the emergency department, said that his back pain improved, and was discharged home. He represents the emergency department 12 hours later after having a syncopal episode. When he returns back to the emergency department, his heart rate's 120 and his blood pressure is 70 over 30. The remainder of his vitals look normal. Let's look at ultrasound and aortic aneurysms. A systematic review was done and it showed that emergency doctors are great. They have a sensitivity of 99% and a specificity of 98%. And also note that half of patients with triple A's will lack the classic triad of hypotension, back pain, and pulsatile abdominal mass. And there's some other pitfalls. A ruptured triple A symptoms and signs are non-specific and unreliable, resulting in a misdiagnosis rate of 30%. And a rupturing triple A is most often mistaken for renal colic and diverticulitis both of which are more common than AAA. So you need to be on the lookout for all of your elderly patients who are over the age of 50. If they're complaining of back pain, take out the ultrasound machine, take a quick screen of their aorta, and make sure they don't have an aneurysm. So now let's look at how to actually do the ultrasound. In order to ensure that you're seeing the entire abdominal aorta, you need to ensure that you're placing the probe at the very top of the abdomen. You're going to palpate the rib cage where it meets the xiphoid, and you're going to place the probe just caudal to the xiphoid. You have the marker pointing towards the patient's right, as we normally would with the point-of-care ultrasound orientation. And when we place the probe at the most cephalad portion of the abdomen, we're going to get an image that looks like this, where you have a very bright white structure here with a dark shadow behind it. This is the spine, the vertebral body. And... In front of the vertebral body, in the near field, you're going to see a couple of blood vessels. One that's already flattened, and one that stays nice and circular. This circular structure with the bright white wall, that is your aorta. And the idea is you're going to slide the probe all the way down until the aorta bifurcates into the two iliacs. So let's look at what that looks like. So here we are sliding the probe down, and we're following that aorta. We're adjusting our depth, following the aorta. And then, boom, it splits into two. Here's your two iliac vessels here that are going to go down into each of your leg vessels. So we follow the aorta from the xiphoid all the way down to the bifurcation, and we're able to see the entire abdominal aorta. Now let's talk about how to measure the aorta. And there's really two ways to measure the aorta. The first way is the eyeball method. We have our aorta here. We scan it from the xiphoid down to the bifurcation, and we go to see where it's the largest, and then we just bring our eyes to the measurements on the side of the screen. And these little hashes here represent one centimeter. They don't always represent one centimeter, but I can tell you in this scenario, when you have all the specifications on your screen, these hash marks are one centimeter separations. And you'd eyeball it by bringing your eyes over to these hash marks. And you'd see that, oh, it's about one centimeter. So maybe a bit above one centimeter. A more accurate way would be to actually use the caliper button on the ultrasound machine and measure from the outer wall to the outer wall where you think it's the biggest. So if you were to measure here, you would actually get a measurement. And in this case, when we measure it was 1.19 centimeters. So it's a much more accurate way, 
but also just by eyeballing this, you knew that that was under two centimeters and you knew that this was a normal aorta. This is obviously not a normal aorta. This is what an aneurysm looks like. And if you look here using your eyeball method, we're looking at one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters, five centimeters. This is a five centimeter aortic aneurysm, quite large as you can see. And in terms of aortic aneurysm sizes, the general consensus is an aorta that's less than two centimeters is considered normal, but the aorta can rupture above three centimeters. However, most ruptures don't occur until you're above 5.5 centimeters. But anytime you have an aorta that's greater than three centimeters and your patient's unstable or hypotensive, and you think it's coming from a ruptured AAA, that's an emergency surgery consult. You're gonna call likely a vascular surgeon, like in my center, and you're gonna notify them that you have an aneurysm and that the patient's unstable. So let's get back to the case. This was a patient who had come in earlier in the day, had some back pain after doing some gardening, was diagnosed with a musculoskeletal strain, was sent home with some anti-inflammatories, and then comes back with a syncopal episode and is found to be hypotensive and tachycardic. When we do our point of care ultrasound, we see a very large aneurysm on the screen. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven centimeters or so of an aneurysm. And you can see even on this screen, there's some very turbulent flow going on in the screen, which makes you quite concerned in this case. So we made a stat page to the vascular surgeons. We let them know that we were very concerned about a ruptured AAA. They were down in the emergency department 10 minutes later, and the patient was consented and went to the operating room within 25 minutes of presenting to the emergency department. They survived surgery and was discharged home on day number five, and they were doing well at their follow-up appointments. So as with all ultrasounds, we need to be very cautious. And the first thing is, we need to be cautious when we're visualizing the aorta. Why is that? Well, this is why. Fat and gas. The aorta is gonna be deeper in the abdomen for people who are more obese. So the sound waves have further to travel. So in your more obese patients, it's gonna be very challenging to get a good view of the aorta. Also, if a patient has bowel gas or stomach gas, it is gonna obscure your ability to see the aorta because the ultrasound waves will scatter as they pass through the gas and it will prevent you from visualizing the more farther field, deeper structure that is the aorta. And the problem is you need to see all of the aorta from the xiphoid to the bifurcation in order to determine if it's negative or not. If you're missing a portion of the aorta and assuming it is normal, that may be deadly. There are a few ways to troubleshoot this, such as pushing harder, asking the patient to bend their knees so it's more comfortable for you to do their scan, getting the patient to breathe in and out to help move the bowel gas, pushing the ultrasound probe on the abdomen and waiting for the gas to clear, or my favorite is bouncing the probe uh, deeper and then less deep, deeper and then less deep to try to forcefully peristalsis the gas out of the way. And the patient generally tolerates this quite well and the bowel gas moves a little bit quicker than just pushing with gentle pressure and holding to wait for the gas to move. We also need to be cautious of where we measure the aorta. And here's a great example. If you look at this screen, you may think that this is where you'd measure the aorta. And really, if you were doing this, you'd get a normal measurement of 2.1 centimeters, but this is actually the lumen of the aorta. It's not the outer wall to outer wall. If I were to measure this aorta, I would measure from here to here, which would give me a measurement of 5.3 centimeters. And that would be an aneurysm. And finally, we need to be cautious about AAA ruptures. Most ruptures are retroperitoneal and POCUS cannot really assess the retroperitoneal area of the abdomen. It really only assesses the intraperitoneal area of the abdomen. So the ruptures that occur are not gonna be detected on your ultrasound unless the rupture occurs intraperitoneal and then you'd see it in Morrison's pouch, but that's the very minority of ruptures. And usually those ruptures are quite fatal because they lose a lot of blood very quickly. So if you see a AAA and the patient's hypotensive and they're complaining of back pain, 
or flank pain or abdominal pain, that is your ticket that this patient has a symptomatic AAA and it's ruptured until proven otherwise. So get on the phone, speak to your vascular surgeon and get them involved in your patient's care. Be very cautious about sending these unstable patients who are hypotensive to the CT scanner to confirm the diagnosis. There's no therapeutic intervention that can be done in the CT scanner. Speak to your vascular surgeon and get them involved in the patient's care. Just like in this case, they're likely to take the patient directly to the operating room. That is why ultrasound is so powerful to have in the emergency department in these situations. So in summary... Patients over the age of 50 complaining of back pain, renal colic, or diverticulitis symptoms, use your POCUS to rule out AAA in these patients. If you don't go looking for a AAA, you're going to miss it because the classic triad of a AAA is not present the majority of the time. Also, if your patient has hypotension, symptoms of a AAA, and you see a AAA on your ultrasound screen, call a surgeon. Do not waste time getting a CT scan before speaking to the surgeon first. Surgeons will often take these patients to the operating room as quickly as possible because time's ticking. Finally, know your limitations. See all the abdominal aorta before declaring it normal. Measure the outer wall to the outer wall of the aorta, not the lumen. And finally, POCUS can't determine ruptures. That's a clinical diagnosis. So if your patient's hypotensive and unstable, pick up the phone and call a surgeon. As always, if there's any questions, you can always email me at pocuscases at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you.